So first, I've got a, a really cheap, easy sink here. This is just a, a pump action faucet. It's not prime, but trust me, it works. The sink itself is just a stainless steel mixing bowl with a drain at the bottom. And this aspect doubles as a shelf. I, I can uh, cook outside here. I can put my laptop here when I'm working if I want to be outside. Uh, behind the curtain is uh, fresh water, it comes up to the pump and then the drain down into my gray water jug. I color coded it so even I can't get it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant, yeah. You don't want to mix those two up. For sure, yeah. And um, while we're here, I mean, you can see there's all kinds of cabinets and things inside, but um, one thing I've seen in a lot of vans is uh, you know, a lot of really nice woodworking. I didn't know how to do that, but I knew how to build erector sets. So instead of building wooden cabinets and everything, uh, there is a frame of this metal L channel. Uh, just all through the van, there's a grid work of it that is the foundation of the entire build, the cabinets, the bed. Because this was a wheelchair van, there are uh, places in the floor to uh, cinch down and tie down wheelchairs. I use those to, uh, to put bolts sticking out of the floor. So the entire build's bolted down. Taller cabinets are bolted in where the, uh, the shoulder seat belt attachment points are. So those are super strong. And you know, I can literally shake the whole van from the cabinet. It's, it's solid. that solid, yeah. So for heat, um, we've got your standard Olympian Wave 3 heater. A lot of people have that, but I have it attached to a, uh, a flat screen TV arm. So it, gets, it gets a lot of articulation. It folds up really nice and flat for when I'm driving, but you know, when I'm sitting out there, I can aim it right at me. If I'm in bed, I can turn it all the way around and uh, oh. keep all the heat for myself. Yeah, it works well. It, uh, it sips propane, not like the buddy heater. Uh, you do have to have some windows cracked and take all the usual propane precautions. It's not like a diesel heater. And I'd, I'd like to upgrade to one someday, but, uh, but this works great for right now. Sleep this way, and uh, it doesn't work so well for me. Yeah. You're um, tall, right? Yeah, I'm six feet tall, mm. and it's a little less than six feet wide wall to wall. Is it also made out of erector sets? Yep, uh, I'm sitting on top of the frame right now. Um, there's just some uh, three quarter inch plywood underneath, um, a futon with a memory foam topper. And, uh, and that's it. It is actually pretty comfy. So for cooking, um, well, this is my pantry here. It doubles as a cabinet door as well as a shelf for uh, just a regular one burner stove. Uh, runs off of the same propane tank I run the Wave 3 off of. I can run it off you know, the little propane bottles. And it's dual fuel, so I can use butane as well. And then what kind of refrigerator do you have? Uh, it's an Alpacool T60. I've got it wrapped in Reflectix. Uh, it's a combination refrigerator-freezer because, uh, I'll be honest, I wanted my ice cream. Uh, I yeah. know there's all kinds of more practical aspects to a freezer, but I wanted ice cream. That's fair. <laughs> so there is a, a lot of storage in here. I have um, one cabinet here. This is the back side of the water I showed you before. I've got pots and pans in here, obviously the whole pantry. Uh, this is my dresser. This is just a, a shelf above the foot of the bed, so it's not going to intrude on headroom, and uh, that's, that's where I keep my clothes. And another cabinet back here. I have my backpack on here. This back here I had sized to hold my motorcycle helmet. Now that I keep it in the trailer, I've got, uh, I've got my Starlink. Uh, the, the massive amount of cable they give you is sitting in there, as well as my inverter and all that good stuff. All right. And a lot of storage under the bed, as well as my electrical system. Uh, I run almost exclusively on 12 volts. Uh, I see little point in taking your 12 volt battery, converting it to AC, only to plug in your laptop that converts it back to DC. You lose power in that process. So I've got 12 volt adapters for my laptop and uh, almost everything. The one thing I don't run off 12 volts is, of course, the Starlink because it just doesn't support that at this time. So I have a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter uh, pretty much dedicated to Starlink at this point. So I have 350 watts of flexible solar panels on the roof. Uh, those are going to their own dedicated charge controller. I also have uh, a separate DC to DC charger that also can handle solar panels, but also handles charging off the alternator. 
And because it handles both, you, you can't mix two different types of solar panels on the same charge controller. But with a separate charger with a solar input, I attach an extra wire that comes out here and I can plug in anything I want, um, including this, uh, this 200 watt solar panel. And what I found is just being able to tilt it toward the sun has seriously increased its efficiency. It's almost like doubling my effective solar with the tilt. It does make a huge difference. Yeah. Uh, so then you have the DC to DC charger and so you're charging off your alternator mm -hmm. uh, and you found that that gives you plenty of power? I, I've measured it and uh, rolling down the road, I get maybe about 400 watts of charging out of the alternator while I'm driving. And that is, now that I've split it off from the, uh, the DC to DC charger, uh, that's in addition to whatever solar is coming in, which can be between one and 200 watts at any time. What first inspired you to hit the road or like what brought you to this lifestyle? I was uh, melting my brain on YouTube videos and YouTube, through its infinite wisdom, threw up some cheap RV living videos. Oh, perfect. I'm not just making that up for the camera, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, it showed me this way of life and the more I thought about it, the more I thought, hey, that could work for me. I bought I myself a starter van, not this one. Right. I did a, uh, a no-build build for weekend trips. I took a, uh, a week-long trip just to see how I liked it in the long term, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I had a girlfriend at the time who was willing to hit the road with me, so um, we, I bought this van, we built it out together, and um, we hit the road. A little earlier than planned because halfway through the build, we had an apartment fire. Oh, and wow. the, uh, the fastest way to get a roof over our heads was finish the van. So uh, thanks to the help of some friends, you know, we blasted through the rest of the build and uh, I've been on the road ever since. Wow. And that's why I call myself Smokey the Van because after the fire, everything we owned was covered in smoke residue. Uh, the van itself cost me eighteen fifty. This was, wow. uh, yeah, this was um, the end of 2019 before everything went crazy with prices. And then how much do you think it cost you to build it out and what you did? Uh, I'm guessing because after the fire, I was throwing money at the problem. Of course. Overall, I think all in maybe 7,000 or so. Oh, wow. So not, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. And I could have done some things more affordably if I wasn't in such a hurry to get it done. Of course. Uh, now, when I met you last year, you just had the van and you had your motorcycle on a, a hitch bumper, right? Right. Yep. Uh, You've added to your collection now. What do you have now why, and why? Just a bit. Uh, yeah, I had a Black Widow trailer hitch carrier before and I carried my bike across the back of the van. Uh, now I have a, uh, an interstate tr uh, six by 10 cargo trailer. That's oh. where I carry my motorcycle inside. I was always afraid of uh, checking my mirror and watching what's left of my motorcycle tumble down the road behind me after it fell off the carrier. Okay. That never happened, but I was always scared of it. Yeah. Plus, uh, you know, I, the van was just packed with all my things anyway. Having a little space to spread out would be nice. And so have you found that having a trailer has limited you at all, or is it still pretty easy to find camping? It limits me some just because it's obviously a longer rig now. Yeah. I'm, I've always been uh, pretty conservative about how far into the backcountry I'll take my home, mainly because then I can hop on a motorcycle and go where no van can go. How, do you feel this is an economical way of living life? It is. Um, I'm definitely spending less money because I'm not paying rent or a mortgage. Of course. Gas is my biggest expense, mm -hmm. and even that I have some control over because I can control how far I go or of course. don't. Uh, food's kind of the biggest ex ongoing expense right now. Yeah, I would agree. Gas and food are, are the big things. Mm -hmm. uh, now you are also kind of, there's a lot of unique things about this situation, this build, but one of them is that you have a cat on the road. And yes. Yeah. And so how has that been? That's been great. Um, my cat Lister, you'll see him around. Uh -huh. um, I've had him almost nine years since he was a kitten. Aww. And we lived in sticks and bricks for the first seven years of that. Mm -hmm. And he was strictly an indoor cat. Yeah. But he was always looking out the window, wanting to see what was outside. So there was a bit of an adjustment period getting on the road, but uh, he's adapted so well. Uh, I keep him on a harness and, uh, and a tether, or I take him for walks on a leash. 
He was a little iffy at first, but he adapted to that really well. Oh, excellent. His favorite thing, he loves getting attention from people. Yes, I've noticed. <laughs> and he, uh, what he loves most about being out here is all the attention he gets. Oh, yeah. So I have a uh, nature's head composting toilet. Um, I've taken out the, uh, the stirrer portion inside, and I just have uh, a garbage bag here just in case of emergency is really all it's for. Um, I still use the, uh, the liquid portion if I need to, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's pretty much that. And as far as Lister's bathroom, um, this section here, we specifically designed to have a, uh, a litter box. This is uh, dedicated for that. Uh, since my Max Air fan is all the way in the back, one nice feature is when um, Lister makes it a real stink in here, I can just open the vent, crank the fan, and uh, blow it right out. Oh, that's great. And do you feel <laughs> that you have pretty good ventilation in the van? Yeah. Um, if I have some windows open in front and the max air blowing out the back, I get cross ventilation all the way through. All right, so I see Starlink up there. What, yeah. what, has that been a game changer for you? Like, are you enjoying it? Was Huge. it worth it? Serious game changer. Um, you know, like I say, I work exclusively online. And uh, I've, I've, got, I've got a couple of cellular hotspots I use, Verizon and T-Mobile. And I just wanted the extra freedom also to be able to go places that didn't have cell service, you know, middle of national forest and things like that, and, uh, and still be able to get online. Uh, this is on the, uh, the standard base that comes with Starlink. Uh, but I have magnets on all four corners of the base. And yeah, it's a fiberglass high top. So I've uh, stuck two small sheets of metal uh, on the roof and it sticks directly to those. I take down the dish and the cable when I'm driving, but I leave the base up there all the time. And even on the highway, it, uh, it stays on with no problem. And how did you attach the metal plates to the roof? Uh, silicone, same as I did with my uh, solar panels. Welcome to my deck. This is just the uh, ramp on the back of my trailer, but uh, I put a couple of jack stands down and uh, it's my deck. That's perfect. <laughs> Come how <on> fancy. <laughs> Clearly this is where I carry the motorcycle. I've got the uh, wheel chalk on the floor, it holds the front wheel, uh, tie downs on E-Track on either side for that. Uh, all my motorcycle gear lives in here, out of the way, out of my living space, and uh, I've got some shelves for uh, storage to uh, maintain a good tongue weight. All my tools, uh, my, my spare AGM battery, actually my old battery is up here as well, that's heavy. I have a basic electrical system in here as well, just, you know, a few odds and ends, some lights and things. When the bike is outside, uh, I can do other things in this space. I sometimes, uh, like as you can see, I set up a table and a chair here, and uh, I can use this as my office. I can just sit down here with the laptop and whatever, and, and have a bit more of a workspace than I do inside the van. So we are here at an LTVA in yep. Arizona. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about like what you're planning on doing with that, and, and tell us a little bit about that. All right. Well, I've uh, I've been here since uh, since early October. It was honestly a little early because it uh, it was pretty hot here at the beginning. Yeah, of course. But um, you know, I I like coming to the LTVA because you know for one hundred eighty dollars for the season, it's you know and you can stay here for up to seven months. It's just a nice place to uh, kind of take a break off the road, you know, settle down, get some things done. Mm -hmm. You know, having access to the facilities, the trash, the water, the dump station. It's 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 just a nice break from being on the road and having to deal with those issues all the time. Is it pretty friendly here? Very friendly. Uh, some of my neighbors here are people I met as complete strangers last year and we intentionally camped together again this year. I go traveling during the summer, have my personal adventures, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I come back and regroup with the community for the winter. And even during the summer I've met up with a few of these people just on the road in California and Colorado, uh, oh, just yeah. intentionally meeting up again. So so if someone wanted to follow your adventures, because you just mentioned that, mm -hmm. how, can, how can we follow along on your adventures? Best ways are uh, smokydevan.com is my website. Uh, I update that every few days. Uh, and also Smoky Devan on YouTube and all the social medias. Okay, so Instagram, Facebook, right. everything. All right, yes. so, so if you want to follow his adventures, that's how you do so it. Thank you again for taking your time today. Folks out there, what was the favorite part of, your, of the van back here? I'd never seen the erector set system before, mm -hmm. so I thought that that was super unique. Uh, Lister is awesome. He's such a, just a cool cat. Uh, what was your favorite part? Please let us know in the comments below. But if you got anything out of today's video, please give it a big thumbs up, 
share it with friends, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, we'll see you down the road. So long, guys.